Hey, how you doing everybody? My name is Cherryboy, and welcome back to Wolf Tales. Let's get right back into it. I watch on in relief, glad to see the dear friends on good terms once more. Maybe the fight wasn't as bad as it sounded. Either that, or this isn't the first time they've had that particular fight. Whatever the case, I'm glad those two are getting along again. One, I look down as Mirari leaves for you side and suddenly addresses me. Yes, Mirari? I just wanted to thank you one more time. Thank me? For what? I didn't do anything. You two made up all up you two made up all on your own. Mirari shakes her head. Not that, or perhaps I sh I should say, not just that. Juan, you've done so much for us, all without asking for a thing in return. That got me thinking. Maybe there's something we can do for you after all. Oh, okay then. I thought cooking and cleaning already counted as pretty nice. Thank you, but what do you have in mind? Mirari and Fiu look on at one another and nod in agreement. You'll see soon enough. Grab a thick coat, we'd have- Grab a thick coat. We'd hate to have you freeze to death on the way over. Alrighty then. To the snowlands we go! Dressed in a thick coat, I follow the girls outside and head down the path they previously attempted to take home. From the moment we leave the cabin, Mirari is smiling from ear to ear. Even for you can't completely contain her excitement. Wherever we're going, it must be somewhere pretty special. <sighs> How much farther? It isn't far now, Juan. Just hang in there a little while longer. Yeah, don't collapse on us now. What kind of man are you? One who's already spent enough time outside today. <laughs> if you have the energy to retort, you should be fine. Don't worry, it really is a short walk from here. Any second now we'll be able to- Ah! There it is! Mari jumps up and down on the spot while pointing towards the mountain. I strain my eyes to see what she's so excited about, that all I can see is a hole in the side of the mountain. What is it? A cave? Not just any cave. Yes, it is what can be found inside of the cave that matters. Inside of the cave, huh? You better not be leading me into a bear's den or something. Of course not. Don't be silly, Juan. Yeah, the bears are all hibernating this time of year anyway. So even if we wanted to get rid of you, luring you into a bear bear's den would be a poor way to do it. It worries me that you seem to have given this some thought. Whoa. Despite my apprehension, I follow the wolf girls to the mouth of the cave. After spending a short time walking through the cave, the temperature begins to rise to the point where I can feel comfortable taking my coat off. Finally, as we near the cave's innermost point, I understand what it is the girls wanted to show me. Ah, yes. That's how girls take their baths together. <sighs> mm, it feels so good. In the depths of the cave, we find, of all things, a natural hot spring! Doubting my own eyes, I stand in front of the hot spring, mouth agape, while the girls cast aside their clothing and jump in without hesitation. A hot spring? Here? How's that work? Is this a dormant volcano or something? Who cares? The water feels great. Mmm, you can say that again. Come in and join us, Juan. Uh, no, I think I'll stay out here. Eh? Why? Well, I mean, the water is probably filled with bacteria, not to mention all sorts of sharp rocks on the base of it. I think I'll be safer out here. Aw, come on, don't be like that. He brought you here to thank you, one. You can't do that if you don't get in. Oh, believe me, this is already thanks enough. I avert my gaze as I try to distract myself from the sublime figures of the two naked wolf girls in front of me. Seeing my reaction, Rory pouts and swims closer. Well, hey, what do you think you're doing? Isn't it obvious? If you won't get in on your own, then I'll just have to pull you in. If you pull me in right now, my clothes are going to get soaked, and I'll freeze to death on the way home. Then take them off and jump in yourself. Few snickers and Mur as Murray shows a surprisingly forceful side of her personality. It seems she doesn't like the idea of her kindness being refused. Sigh. Fine, I get it. I'll join you. But are you sure you're okay with this? I am a guy, you know. So? We're just bathing. Stop being such a prude. So I'm the weird one here for having shame, am I? Whatever. Don't say I didn't warn you. Worn down by the girl's persistence, I take off my clothes. That's it, that's it. Bathe with us. Well, what the... Is that a man's... Rari happily pulls me in by the arm. Fiu, on the other hand, immediately turns red in the face and begins to cover her eyes with her hands. If you're that embarrassed, look away. I'm not embarrassed! I just, you know, I always bathe with my mother when my father kept watch, so I've never, um... Fiu's voice becomes more faint as she averts her gaze. I forgot that Juan was a man. Am I really that unmanly? Darn. <coughs> Enduring all kinds of shame and embarrassment, I submerge my lower half in the water. 
Wow, you girls weren't kidding. Right? I found this place the last time I ran away from the pack. <laughs> nice to hear that something ga good came of your mischief. Something good always comes of my mischief. <clears throat> Morari smiles, smiles coyly as she brings one hand to her face. Ever since she jumped into the hot spring, Morari's been acting less revered. Reversed. Reserved, right, reserved, right, reserved than usual. I guess a little bit of mischief is okay now and then, considering how well behaved you usually are. Though, speaking of mischief, I turned around to look at Fiyu. Mm. Rather than join Mirari and I, Fiyu was sitting by herself. She continues, continues to squirm around, rubbing her thighs together with a red face. It, it couldn't be. While the hot spring has loosened Mirari up, it seems that Fiyu has become stiff from the moment I joined them. Ever since I stripped in front of, you, in front of her, Fiyu has been keeping to herself. Hmm, what do we have here? What are you doing hiding away over here? Flat <laughs> Princess, what are you? Ah! Seeing Fiyu sitting all by herself, Mirari decides it's time to intervene. <laughs> you have to clean yourself properly, Fiyu. I know you usually just lick yourself clean, but it would be a shame to let this opportunity go to waste. No, Princess, don't! <laughs> your breasts have grown again, haven't they, Fiyu? And your skin is so smooth, I'm surprised it's still so gorgeous, considering how rarely you bathe. Princess, please stop this! What has gotten into you? Is this water messing with your brain? Aw, don't be like that. I'm not the only one acting different, right? No, I can wash myself. Please, Princess, just- Yeah. Yep, that's how we'll wolf wash each other. Murmur if you continue to play in the water while I desperately try to hide my reaction. I don't think I'm going to be able to relax much during this bath, either. Just chilling in the hot spring. Yep. Following an uneventful walk back to the cabin, the rest of our day proceeds without incident. Mirari back to, back to her old self, cooks dinner for the three of us, all the while acting like the events in the hot spring never happened. Fiu, on the other hand, has been uncharacteristically quiet and submissive. She's kept to herself and hasn't talked except when spoken to. Forget it, they'll be back to normal tomorrow. They've already gone to bed anyway. Rather than worry about the chaos they were creating earlier, I should simply enjoy the peace. Pass out. I lay down on my bed and close my eyes. Being with the wolf girls all day has tired me out. Right now, all I want to do is... Eh. Creak! Oh, for crying out loud. I regretfully open my eyes and peer towards the door to my bedroom. Watching the door carefully, I notice subtle movement as the intruder attempts to open the door more quietly than they started to. A few moments later, a familiar pair of ears enter my line of sight, followed by two timid, curious eyes. Sigh, Fiu, what are you doing? Mm. Is something wrong? If you're hungry again, go ask Mirari to make you something. Without saying a word, Fiu draws closer. She tips toes over to my bed, careful not to make too much noise. Once Fiu has reached near my bed... Whoa! She begins to undress! For you, what are you doing? Uh, for you, what are you doing? Are you still half asleep? Paying my words, no mind. Fiu removes the rest of her clothes. She then crawls towards me on her hands and knees, not stopping until she reaches my side. One. An inch away from my face, Fiu calls my name. Her cheeks are red, her eyes are watery, and I could tell at a glance that she isn't her usual self. One, please. While facing me, Fiu opens her legs. Now that she's almost naked and on her knees right in front of me, I can see every inch of her body. Despite her embarrassment, Fiu makes no efforts to hide her body from my eyes. It's your fault that I'm like this. I never once felt this way around Marari or the other members of our pact, so take responsibility. As I dare to think earlier, this wolf girl is in heat! Listen, Fiu, I'm flattered that you think of me that way, but you don't really want to do this. What you're feeling right now is just an influx in your hormones. If you go through with this, you're surely going to regret it. And, uh... Are you done? Fiu pushes her face right next to mine! With her lips an inch away from mine, she looks into my eyes longingly and continues to speak. I don't expect you to feel the same way I do. In fact, after all of the things I've said and done to you, you probably despise me. Even so, I can't help the way I feel, whether you love me or hate me. Please, I beg of you, embrace me. Oh, we got the kiss! Before I can respond, Fiu closes the final distance between us. Her soft, pursed lips brush up against mine, kissing me so lightly that I can just barely feel it. The moment she begins to pull back, Fiu closes in once more, this time with confidence. She pushes her lips against mine forcefully, taking me by surprise and stealing the air from my lungs! Fiu then moves back slightly and lowers her head, bringing her lips to my neck instead. She runs her tongue along my neck for a moment before doing the same thing with her nose, nuzzling me expectantly. 
And so we gave birth to Wolf Babe. Well, unable to resist my own urges, I agreed to help for you with her own, kneeling behind her. Uh, well, well, wait, well, 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 yep, yep, uh, I focus on her pleasure and, uh, yes, and then we made beautiful wolf babies together. Few body fall limps on my mattress, and the only sound still re reverberating throughout the room is her ragged breathing. Though her face is red and her hormones are likely still running amok, I've managed to satisfy Few's urges, if only temporarily. <sighs> Unbelievable. I thought she might have been in heat, but I never expected for you to come to me about it. Perhaps for you has a better impression of me than I thought. Looking down at Fiu's peaceful expression as she sleeps, I sigh one more time and resolve to help her out once again. While Fiu sleeps, I wipe down her body, get her dressed, and roll her onto her back. I should be thankful she fell asleep when she did. I'm not sure I would have been able to hold back if he'd gone on much longer. I then take my place beside her, close my eyes, and try one more time to go to sleep. Damn, who am I kidding? There's no way I'm going to be able to sleep after that. This is going to be a long, long night. So I wonder if that's for you, do we get the Mirari? What about Mirari? In the days following my night together with you, I noticed a clear change in her behavior. While it's nothing as extreme as the night she crept into my bed, she's definitely not her usual self. Every day she follows me around, acting like she has something she wants to say, yet never actually talking to me. Few also steals glances at my face whenever we're eating or watching television, and it seems like she's been clinging to Mirari less and less every day. Well, I'm sure there's a perfectly reasonable explanation for her behavior. The only event which ever comes to mind is the night Few crept into my bed. Are you sure you've eaten enough for you? You usually eat three times as much. <clears throat> for you? Mm-hmm. Oh, princess. I am not hungry. I have already eaten my fill. Are you sure? There's still plenty left. Mm. Sigh. Back to ignoring me, huh? Few continues to watch me out of the corner of her eyes as Mirari sighs in expiration. You've changed, Few. More in a couple of nights than I would have thought possible in a lifetime, Juan. <clears throat> what did you do to her, exactly? Hey, don't look at me. If you've changed, it's her own doing. Mm, perhaps so. But even then, something must have happened to make her want to change herself. Did you impregnate her? <laughs> I almost spit out the contents of my mouth as Mirari takes me completely by surprise. Impregnate? You mean me? Impregnate for you? Yes, did you? Of course not! Why not? Why? I sit back down and take a few deep breaths as I try to calm down. For you as a woman of age, she has not yet taken a mate, and she appears to have taken a liking to you. I can see no reason for you to turn down her advances. You make it all sound so simple. Is it not simple? Of course it isn't. I mean, for you just acting like this because she's in heat, right? What happens when she returns to normal and she realizes that she's thrown away something precious on the spur of the moment? Ah, so you're concerned about that Fiyu will no longer desire you, desire you once her hormones have settled down. I wouldn't worry about that. Why shouldn't I? Of all the things weighing on my mind, that's a pretty big one. Smirking to herself, Mirari turns to look at Fiyu. Following her eyes, I do the same. The moment I do, my eyes meet Fiyu's and she hurriedly looks away. I don't think you have to, anything to worry about. We don't just do it with whoever whenever... With whoever happens to be closer when their hormones flare up. If Fiu has chosen you, then you can rest assured that her feelings will not change so easily. Our species is made for life, you know. Smiling from one, from ear to ear, Marari happily clears the table as we all finish eating. While she's doing that, I look over at Fiu, who once again turns away in a panic the moment our eyes meet. Even if Marari says there's nothing to worry about, I should really do something about Fiu's behavior. If she does like me, then I want her to at least be able to look me in the eye. And if she doesn't, then we need to clear up this misunderstanding as soon as possible. Either way, the two of us are due for a serious talk. All right, for you, time to lay it on thick. Despite resolving myself to speak to Fiu, the day quickly passes by without me being able to talk to her at all. Every time I try to speak to her, Fiu either ducks behind the couch, hides behind Mirari, or leaves the room. I try to approach her many times, but no matter what I do, she refuses to talk to me. <sighs> So much for having a serious discussion. I guess I'll just have to wait until Fiu has calmed down before I try talking to her. And she's gonna get me again, isn't she? Giving up for the day, I return to my bedroom. As I go to walk through the door, however, I find someone standing in the way. Fiu? Uh, yeah! Fiu jumps in fright as I call her name. Fiu, what are you doing out here? Is there something you'd like to talk to me about? <clears throat> Fiu says nothing as she stares at me, but it seems like she wants to say something. Perhaps a bit more privacy is a good idea. Would you like to go for a walk? Mwah! Fiu opens her eyes and mouth wide as she stares at me in shock. 
The next moment, however, mm -hmm. yes, yes I would. To my surprise, Fiu agrees to the walk. She brushes past me and out the door and quickly descends down the stairs. I better follow her. <clears throat> the air outside is crisp, but not to the point of being unpleasant. I figure I'm better off trying to talk to Fiu out here. The outdoors seem to calm her. Beat red, yet smiling faintly, Fiu walks in front of me. Without looking back at me even once, she sits on the edge of a stump, fidgeting restlessly as she looks down at her fingers. I follow Fiu over to the fallen tree, <coughs> then take a seat right next to her. Um, Juan, about the other night. Yes, Fiu? I... what happened that night? It was all, um, you know... I only acted that way because of my bi biology and, um, you know, instinct made me do it, or something. So don't go misunderstanding, okay? It's not as though I like you, or want to be your mate or anything. Stammering uncontrollably, un sorry, uncontrollably, Fiu eventually manages to squeeze out a few sentences. Still looking down at her lap, she plays with her fingers as she speaks, desperate to avoid eye contact at all costs. Ah, so it was just a hormonal thing after all. Phew. It's a good thing we stopped where we did then. Relieved, but also a little disappointed. I smile and turn to Phew. That's what's been worrying you, huh? You thought I might take the other night's events the wrong way. Well, you can rest easy. I understand perfectly. You just act in accordance with bio biology bi sorry, biological urges. Of course you don't feel anything for me. You don't understand anything at all. Huh? I said you don't understand! I'm not just some slave to my body, you know. I have my own thoughts and free will. I wouldn't do that with someone just because my body told me to, okay? No, I get that, but didn't you just say... Ah, jeez, forget I said anything! This is why I can't stand you humans! Jumping to her feet in a huff, Fiu begins to leave the area. Confused and also somewhat worried about her, I stand up and follow after her. Phew, I get that you're feeling temperamental at the moment, but... Shut up! You don't know a damn thing about how I feel! How could a human ever understand what my kind goes through? Fiu snaps at me the moment I catch up to her. Backing away defensively, Fiu acts like cornered prey as she creates distance between us. No, it's not just you. Even the princess doesn't get it. None of you understand my feelings at all. None of you even try to understand. Why is Mirari the only one who gets to be selfish? Why can't I take something for myself for once? Even here, away from the pack, I still can't have things my way. Before I realize it, Fiu squabble with me has turned into an excuse for her to complain about her lot in life. Out in the forest with nobody but a single human being. Fiu begins to vent her frustration. Why? Why is it always her? Why is that no matter what I do, I'm always living in her shadow? Even now, when it's just the three of us, I'm still nothing compared to her. For you, what are you talking about? I don't know what life was like with your pack, but in my cabin, the two of you are equal. Don't lie to me, Juan. The princess got here first. She made herself useful, enamored herself with human culture. She even managed to steal your heart. Before I could do so much as stake my claim, that girl took everything for herself. My... my heart? What are you trying to say for you? You don't need to hide it. I can see the way that you two look at each other. She's the reason why you don't want to be with me, is, isn't she? What? For you, Mirari and I don't have that kind of relationship. Like I believe that! You two have probably been doing lewd things this entire time behind my back, haven't you? We have not! Mirari's a nice girl, and I do like her, but... But what? But you're the only one with whom I've ever done something like that for you. Mm. Eh? For you, anger dissipates in an instant, replaced by confusion. Before she could regain her senses and deny my words, I took a seat on the log, prompting for you to do the same. So many CGs! She hesitates for a moment, then sits next to me, crossing her arms indignantly. Indignantly. For you, I'm sorry about what I said before, but I didn't do it for the reason you're thinking. Humans... <sighs> sigh. Humans aren't like half-wolves in that way. We don't mate for life, or want to have kids with people we barely know. Humans tend to spend years with one another before talking about that kind of stuff, and even then, it rarely works out. That's why... I don't want to enter into, the, into that kind of relationship on a whim, or as a consequence of you going into heat. It's not you for you. You've done, you've done nothing wrong. And if I were a... And I, if, sorry. And if I were a more... <laughs> if I were a more irresponsible person, I would have happily taken advantage of you. But I... I'm not like that. 
Taken in by my words, Fuse sits quietly next to me. I place my head on my hand on Fuse's head and speak to her in a soft tone of voice. With a gentle smile on my face, I look down at her fondly. For you, I've been alone for a long, long time. And just like you, I have no idea how to act around others. I closed off my heart, started pushing people away, and abandoned everyone and everything I ever cared about. All to start a new life out here on my own. But you know, in the short time you and Mirari have been here, you showed me how impossible my goal was from the very beginning. I was wrong to think that I was better off alone. The time I spent with the two of you has been the most fun I've had in years. And I think if you opened your heart, if you allowed someone else to see your true self for once, instead of getting defensive, you might feel that way, the same way. I mess up Fuse's hair slightly with my hand, then remove my hand from her head and lean back. Even so, I know how hard it is to change. I also know what a big decision this is, and how great of an effect it will have on your life. That's why I won't make any careless promises, or leave you with a bunch of kids and then shrug it off like it isn't my problem. If you're serious about wanting a relationship with me for you, then you'll need to be patient. I need my partner to be someone who takes these matters as seriously as I do, and won't give up everything on a whim. I need someone who shares the same ideals I do. For you remains silent as she listens to my words. Other than expressing minor displeasure at having her hair ruffled, Fiyu remains attentive, barely changing her expression or breaking her concentration. When I finish speaking, Fiyu looks away with a serious expression on her face, still clinging to a mo modicum of defiance. The insolent human. I already told you. I don't want anything like that from you. But you do, don't you? I'm not talking to you anymore. Fiyu pouts and continues to avoid eye contact. I take that as, as for you signaling that she needs some time alone to think about everything I've just told her. Alright, I understand. I'm gonna head back inside now. I'll talk to you tomorrow for you. Wait! Uh, um... Fiu hurriedly stops me, stops me as I begin to stand, but immediately realizes she has nothing in specific to say. I don't mind if you want to stay a little while longer. Just for a little while. Not to talk or anything. We sit outside while Fiu calms down. The night air is becoming chilly, and we'll have to go back inside shortly. But for now, I'm content to just sit here with Fiu. Surprisingly, Fiu speaks up first. Hey, you're really able to make a go of it out here on your own. I guess. So even if someone like you can make it, I probably could too. And what are you saying for you? Do you want to become a lone wolf? I don't know. I hadn't even considered the option until now. All my life, I've been told to live for the pack and their rules, to serve Mirari's family. But if someone had just told them that we didn't need to be like that, maybe things would be okay. Do you resent her? Mirari? No. She's just as much as a victim as of circumstance as I am. She's been groomed from a young age to be the next pack leader. Though seeing her refuse to go back to the pack makes my blood boil. Fiu is silent again before speaking up once more. Maybe I can even live here with you. That's the last thing I expected you to say. I thought you didn't like human society. Who said anything about human society? You came raw for all I care. I just mean that you're a lone wolf. You're living out here all on your own with no pack needed. Perhaps I could join you. That kind of defeats the lone wolf aspect. So, it's not like I'm asking you to be my mate or anything. I just mean if we were to live together as a cohabilitation thing. You know as, as well as I do that humans and half-humans living together is taboo. I'm sure it's the same in your pack as well. We keep a wide berth from humans because you tend to treat us poorly. poorly. There's been too many stories about curious half-humans going into human cities and never being seen again. But if a human gained acceptance into the pack and contributed to the pack, then it wouldn't matter. And so far, you have been pretty kind. Perhaps not all humans are bad. For you scratches her chin as she weighs in on a realization. Smiling to myself, I decide it's time to head back inside the cabin. Fiu follows me quietly, mulling to herself. Even if our conversation didn't head in the direction I planned, it seemed Fiu is starting to become more honest with herself, if only a little. At this rate, I think we'll be able to return to normality in no time. Wow. <clears throat> Things got deep. Alright, but that's all the time I have for this one, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and comment down below. Please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, as that would be epically appreciated of you. Thanks so much for watching, everybody, and as always, my name is Chairboy, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!